I hope you can hear that crunch. <laughs> that is that is so good. We're gonna start by filling up our vortex all the way with BB briquettes. Now, one of the things that I've actually been using a lot is this sous vide gun. So you guys have seen me in the past actually use charcoal starters, which I do think work great. But at the same time, I mean it, we've been using this a lot. If you guys have been watching our last few videos, I've been using this to light the charcoal on the big pit back there. And also we're going to use it today. So really consider getting one of these if you guys grill a lot. I do think that they're a great tool. There will be a link in the description. And we're just gonna start our briquettes. I don't need to hold this here the whole time, but I do need to get them going just so they can get nice and hot. And for our kettle fried chicken wings, we are gonna treat these the same exact way that we would if we were deep frying these. So I'm gonna start with around two cups of all purpose flour. And then we're gonna go in with our Southern Hot Spitality. This is a hot barbecue rub. It does have a little bit of sweet in there, but this is gonna add great color and flavor. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pour a little bit in there. I'm gonna mix everything up. And all I want is for this flour to have a noticeable color change to it. I don't want it to necessarily be all red and orange, but I do want to be able to see seasoning in there. So after I mixed up, I don't see enough. I'm gonna pour more, just eyeball it. And I'm just gonna keep doing this until I'm satisfied. You can kind of start seeing it get a little bit of a red orange tint there. So we're close, but I still wanna see more. So if you look really closely at the flower, now you'll see all of the Southern Hot Spitality in there. I know that this is perfect. And we don't wanna overcomplicate anything with this recipe. So now I'm gonna start grabbing my chicken wings and throwing them right into the flour. All I'm gonna do is get these nice and coated. I'll even squeeze some of the flour into my chicken wings. And this right here is looking perfect. For our kettle fried chicken wings today, we're gonna to be using our 26 inch kettle. We've got the vortex attachment here. The coals are nice and hot. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a Jack Daniels barrel wood chunk there. And we'll start layering our chicken wings around the vortex. And now we'll go ahead and close down our kettle. Two things we need to make sure of when we're cooking our kettle fried chicken wings. The top vent does need to be rotated every 15 minutes. If you think about it for a quick second, if we keep it in one spot, all of the airflow is exiting one location. There's a lot of chicken wings that are surrounding the whole grate. We do wanna make sure we get maximum airflow so we need to rotate. And after our first rotation, we're gonna look at the chicken wings so I can tell you tip number two. 15 minutes later, we wanna check on our wings and you can already see from here, they are starting to build that crust. That's what kettle fried chicken wings is all about. So you can also do this with drums, thighs, you can really do this with whatever, but you can see that that smoke is also just coming right off of that barrel head. This is so far going exactly the way that we want. Now the second thing that we wanted to talk about was a cooking spray. Today we're using Pam. You can use avocado oil or any other spray oil. We wanna put this on top of the chicken wings. That's gonna help build that crust and get everything nice and crispy. So I'm just gonna go right over top of the chicken. And like we talked about a few minutes ago, I'm gonna rotate that lid. So that's gonna allow the airflow to now come over this side of the chicken wings rather than the front side. After another 15 minutes, our chicken wings have taken on really nice color. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip these and we're gonna spray the back side just to make sure everything gets nice and crispy. It's been right at 45 minutes and we've rotated our lid three times now. Let's go ahead and temp these wings to see if they're ready. Got around 200 degrees there, that's perfect. Just go to another random one. 191, could go a little bit more on that one. 202, yeah, I'm gonna call these good. I know that there might be a few that are a little bit behind, but that's completely okay with me. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get these off, get them onto a pan and just let them cool down for a second. We're gonna make a wing sauce. Now the wings are nice and crispy and you could stop right here. Today we are choosing to add a buffalo sauce. You don't have to do that. You could add barbecue sauce, a garlic parm, 
make it your own, but today we're gonna add a nice buffalo sauce. So we're gonna go ahead and go onto the kettle with half a stick of butter, and I'm just gonna eyeball some Frank's Red Hot. And while we're at it, what the hell, we're gonna add some Blue's Hog Original. Just eyeballing everything. Maybe a couple of tablespoons or so. Our chicken wings and our sauce are completely done, so let's get this show on the road. So I wanted to grab one of these and I wanted to bring it close. Hopefully you guys can hear the crispiness in the microphone. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add a little bit of sauce. We don't wanna add too much just because I don't want everything to get like completely soaked. I obviously want everything to be nice and coated, but I want a really light coating, especially because we created that crust with these kettle fried wings. I just wanna make sure we don't go overboard. Just a little bit more, not much. And that right there looks like a perfect kettle fried chicken wing. Last thing to do is take a bite. So don't forget, high heat is very important when it comes to the kettle fried chicken wings. That's why we use the Vortex. We were upwards of 550 degrees, even in our 26 inch kettle. If you're using the 22, it's gonna be even hotter. You might wanna flip them a little bit sooner than I did, but it's gonna turn out absolutely perfect. I'm really hoping that in this microphone, you guys were able to hear some of the crunch that went on in my mouth. It genuinely gets me excited because that's all that you want in a good chicken wing. Perfect flavor, perfect texture. And sometimes when you're grilling or smoking wings, you might not have the crispiness that you fully want. This allows you to get that. That flour will give you that fried effect. And of course, smoked and grilled chicken wings are always gonna taste delicious. As always, we really appreciate you guys tuning into this video. Oh. I almost forgot to tell you. Don't forget your favorite dipping sauce. I hope you can hear that crunch. <laughs> that, is, that is so good. We'll see you on the next one.